In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a fruit face using Adobe Photoshop. Now, all the fruit face is is basically what you can see on your screen right now. It is different pieces of fruit that have been cut out and then rearranged on a page to resemble a face. So let's get started on making it. Before we do get into Photoshop today, the first thing we need to do is actually download the pieces of fruit that you would like to include in your face. Now, you can go into Google and download all the different items of fruit that you would like to use. Or if you want to save a bit of time, why don't you use the fruit that I have saved for you? I've got this folder, all these different items of fruit saved on the school's virtual library. So feel free to log into there and in the topic one section there, you'll see a fruit face asset folder where you can download all this fruit very quickly. Uh, but feel free to get onto Google Images if you would like and find your own pieces of fruit. Now to get started in Photoshop, you'll end up on a screen like this when you open it up. All you need to do is click on Create New. And I usually head along to the print templates at the top here and choose an A4 template. If you can't see that A4 template, just type in the following dimensions over here. 210 pix uh, sorry, 210 millimeters for the width, 297 millimeters for height, resolution is 300 pixels per inch, and the color mode I like to change to CMYK. That just gets our page set up ready for high quality printing. So when we finish our fruit faces, we'll be able to print these out and stick them up on the wall. So click on Create. It'll just take a moment to load up and you'll get an empty white canvas on your page that is an A4 size. If you want to zoom in and out here, just press Control Plus to zoom in or Control Minus to zoom out. If you want to go full screen, press Control Zero. There are just a few little zoom commands there that you might find that come in handy as you um, progress through the tutorial today. Now the first thing we need to do on our fruit face is choose what piece of fruit we want to use for our head. The head I'm going to use is the watermelon. So I'm going to go up to File and Open. And I just need to go back to that folder that I downloaded before with all the pieces of fruit in it. I've got that in my Media Arts folder here. Okay, so you can see all the different types of fruit. You don't have to use the watermelon as the head for your fruit face. Okay, this is just my example. So I'm going to go with watermelon. Feel free to choose whatever you want. And that will open it up in a new tab at the top of your page. So you've still got your original A4 canvas here, which is what we're going to make the fruit face on. But over here on our second tab, we've got our watermelon. So what we want to do is we want to cut this watermelon out of this image and go and stick it onto our empty canvas. Okay, so there's a few ways we can cut out fruit in Photoshop. The quickest way to do it is heading down our, on the left hand side here, down the toolbar to the fourth tool down. If you hold your left mouse button down on that, you've got a few different selection tools. The one we're looking for is the middle one, the quick selection tool. So please select that now. It looks like a little paintbrush with a little loopy thing around it, a dashed loop around it. With the quick selection tool, all you need to do is click and drag over the shape that you would like to select and you'll see these little marching ants appear. It's starting to select your shape and the more you click and drag, the more it's going to select. So just keep clicking and dragging over the shape until it selects the entire watermelon. Okay, you can see just up the top here, it didn't select that little bit up the top. I don't want that, so I'm happy to have that deselected. So Photoshop has basically worked out what we want to select and it's now got these little marching ants as they're called or a marquee running around the outside of the shape. That's our selection. All we need to do now is go up to edit and you can either choose cut or copy. I'll just choose cut so you can see it cut it out. It cuts our watermelon out. We go over to our first tab here and go to edit and paste. And it comes in a little bit small for my liking. So what we need to do is resize it. To resize, you need to go back to your toolbar on the left hand side here, sorry, the toolbox, and choose the first little bunch of arrows there, it's the move tool. And up the top here, make sure auto select is checked, and make sure transform con show transform controls is checked as well. If you uncheck the transform controls, these little handles here that appear around the shape will disappear and you won't be able to resize it very easily. But with those transform controls, you can easily grab these handles and resize your shape. Now there's a few rules when it comes to resizing shapes in Photoshop. Never grab from in the middle here and just pull it that way. It deforms the image. Same if you're going vertically, it deforms the image. 
Okay, so I'm just going to hit that little circle with the line through it up the top here to say no, I don't want to apply those changes. What I want you to do is actually grab from one of the four corners to resize it. Now when you do this, you still have the opportunity, opportunity to deform it, but if you hold down shift on your keyboard when you do this, it will no longer let you deform it. It stays in proportion. Now, it does look a bit blurry as I make this bigger, but that's just while I'm resizing it. Once I've got it to a good size, I'm going to hit the little tick at the top. That will apply my changes and it will come back to a higher resolution. And now I've got the head for my fruit face in place and looking good. If you need to rotate it a little bit, you can click back on this so that the handles appear again. And if you hover just off one of the corners, you'll see your mouse cursor changes to little arrows. And all you need to do is click and drag, and you're able to rotate your shape around. So if you need to, feel free to rotate your shape a little bit. I think I might just tilt it a little bit to the right. Okay, my head now is ready for the next bit. So I'm thinking I might put some eyes into my shape next. So the fruit that I'm going to use for my eyes is going to be kiwi fruit. So I'm just going to go to file and open again. And I'm going to look for the kiwi fruit. There they are there. And I'm going to open up the kiwi fruit. Now again, you don't have to use kiwi fruit for your eyes. This is just an example. I prefer it if you chose something different. Now we're going to select this in the same way we did just before. We're going to head down our toolbox here on the left hand side. We're going to choose the fourth tool and we're going to hold our left mouse button down on it until the quick selection tool appears and we're going to select that. Now simply click and drag over the top of your kiwi fruit and let Photoshop do the selection for you. Once it's all perfectly selected, go up to edit and cut, go back to your first tab and go edit paste, not once but twice. So we've now got two kiwi fruits, one on top of the other there. Using your move tool, which is those bunch of arrows we used before, pick them up and just move them around the page. It doesn't look like these guys need too much resizing, so I'm pretty happy to leave those kiwi fruit as is. Okay, so they look pretty decent for the eyes. Next thing I might chuck in is a nose. So for my nose, looking back at the fruit here, a lot of things we could use. I'm going to go with a pear for mine. Now this one's a little bit tricky to um, select, you're going to see why in just a moment. If we go and grab our quick selection tool again and start selecting this pair, as I move towards the bottom, actually it's done a pretty good job of it, I thought it was going to select this reflection down here. I'm going to select this reflection just to show you what happens when you make a mistake. Okay, so say you're selecting your fruit and you've selected this reflection down here by mistake. You don't want that selected. There's a few ways we can deselect that bit. The easiest way to do it is go at the top here, and there's a little brush with a minus symbol next to it. That's just the subtract option, and it will deselect anything you run over. So I'm just going to click and drag over the top of this reflection, and the computer will start deselecting it. So we just want to get it back around the pair. Okay, now it does a pretty good job of that. There you go. That's one way of deselecting things if you make a mistake. Oops, still see a few little bits and pieces there. So that looks pretty good. One other thing I want to show you though is another way to select items that don't really work well with this quick selection tool. Sometimes if you've got a busy background, this quick selection tool is not going to work very well. It starts selecting things in the background um, and it just doesn't pick up the bits that you want to use in your design. So I'm just going to get rid of those marching ants for a minute. Instead of using the quick selection tool, the tool above it, we have the lasso tool. We've got the lasso, the polygonal lasso and the magnetic lasso tool. I find the polygonal lasso tool the easiest to use for selecting things, so I want you to grab that now. And all you need to do is click around everything you would like to keep in the image, or the things you want to select in the image, you click around them. And I'll give you an example. What we do is we start up here, I guess somewhere near the stalk or the stem, and we click our mouse once. And I'm going to click just inside the pair there. Okay, and as I click once, a line begins to follow my mouse wherever it goes. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just move a little bit further along the pair, and I'm going to click again. And I'm just going to go click, click, 
click, click, and it's just a matter of going around the shape, clicking, clicking, clicking very carefully just inside the edge of that pair. Now I'm doing this a little bit rushed just to save time in this video, but the slower you go and the neater you get this, the better your selection is going to look. Okay, now sometimes you need to zoom in as well, so feel free to press Control Plus and you can get in a bit closer to make more detailed clicks. As you can see, my clicks are quite dodgy. Now if you need to move up, just move your mouse up and the screen will automatically start to move up. And what you need to do is go all the way back to the start, just go and click, 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 click. When you get back to the start, just click on that start point and there's your selection. Okay, so it's gone around and selected the pair pretty nicely. Now it's just like before, we go to edit, we cut it out, go back to the first tab, and we paste in our nose. Use your move tool there to move it around, rotate it if you need to, give it a bit of a resize if you want. And that's about it. There's not much more you need to know. So basically now all you're going to do is keep opening up different items of fruit and you're going to cut them out and paste them into um, your fruit here or into your fruit face. Actually, there's one more thing I might show you. I'm just going to make this head a little bit smaller for a minute because what I want to do is put some ears onto my fruit face and there's a bit of a knack to getting the ears right. Let me show you. I'll just go to open for a sec and I'm going to choose oranges for my ears. And instead of using the whole orange, I'm just going to use half of it. And I'll show you how we get around that um, quite easily in our fruit face. So I'm going to go back to my quick selection tool because I find that the easiest and quickly select all of my orange. And I'm going to go to edit and cut. Back in my fruit face, I'm going to paste it in twice. So we've got two ears. Using my move tool, I'm going to go and put them in position on each side of the face. Need to make them a little bit smaller so they fit in the screen there. Okay, now that looks a bit funny because they are on top of the head. What I want to do is put them behind the watermelon. That will look a lot better if they're behind the watermelon. And the quick way to do that is use something called layers. Over here on the right hand side, you've got these panels and we've got a layers panel here. If you can't see that, just go to your window menu and select layers and it will pop up. Now each item of fruit is on a different layer. If you've got a layer at the top of this list, it means it's on top of the picture. If you've got a layer down the bottom here, it means it's in the background or behind everything else in the picture. So what I want to do is move layer 6 and layer 5, which are my two oranges here, down towards the bottom. So I'm going to move it below the watermelon. So I'm going to move layer 6 down by clicking it and dragging it and dropping it below layer 1. And you see now it hides behind the watermelon. It's also a good idea to give these layers names. So I might call this orange 1. I might call this watermelon. Um, this one's a kiwi fruit. All you need to do is double click on them and it'll let you rename them. Kiwi 2, we've got a pear for the nose and this one was orange 2. Okay, so orange 2 is still on top of my layers list. That's why it's sitting on top of everything else. If I move it on top of the kiwi fruit, it stays on top of them. But as I move it down the page, okay, it's now below the pear. So you can see that it's hiding behind the pear. If I put it below the kiwi fruit, it now hides behind the kiwi fruit. If I move it below the watermelon, it's going to do the same thing as what happened before on the right hand side there. And our ear gets cut off. And that looks a bit better, doesn't it? Rather than having them on top of the watermelon, they look so much better underneath it. Okay, that's probably the last trick I need to show you. So what I'm going to do now is just speed up the video and I'll put the finishing touches onto my fruit face. All right, so that is basically my fruit face done. Probably could have had a little bit more hair, but I think that'll do. Last thing I want you to do before you finish up is 
make a little bit of room at either the top or the bottom and stick your name in. So I'll show you how to put your name in because when we print this out, I'd like to show people who made each fruit face. So to put your name in, down your left hand side of the toolbox, look for the letter T. That's your type tool which will allow you to type on the page. So when you select that, up the top you've got some um, settings you can play around with. You've got your font here, so there's all your different fonts you can play around with. There's a huge list there that you can play with. Um, the style of font, so you can change it to be bold or whatever. Uh, the size, and well, the other thing you need to worry about is this one here, the color. So I'm just going to choose black for mine. And for some reason my text is going vertically. Um, I might just need to quickly change that if I can work out how. No, I'll just work it out later. Oh, I know. I picked up the wrong tool. Okay. So what we need to do is made by Mr. Made Up. And that's obviously too big, so I'll just highlight my name and just drop that size down to whatever fits, I suppose. 36 looks good. Now I'll just use my move tool there just to move it back into the center of the page. So that's basically it. That is how you create a fruit face in Adobe Photoshop. When you're finished, there's two ways you can save this. If you are only halfway through and you want to come back and still edit this later on, so you've still got access to all these different layers, you need to go to File and Save As. And when you save it, save it as a PSD file, which is a Photoshop document file and just click save. The other way to save, if you're completely finished, you're happy with it and you don't want to make any more changes, then you go to file and you go to export and go export as. Now in the export as dialog box that will appear in just a sec, my computer's a little bit slow so just bear with me here. Here we go. Box will come up, um, there's lots of different settings here, you don't need to worry about any of these really. The only thing you really need to change is the format from PNG here. Change it to the second one, JPG, pronounced JPEG. Okay, and that should be all good, so click on export down below. It will ask you where you want to save it. So just give it a name like fruit face and save it. Okay, now my computer's a bit slow, yours probably won't take this long, but that has saved now. What I want you to do when you're fully done is email that JPEG version of your image through to me, and I will print it out in colour and stick it up on the classroom wall if I think it's good enough. Okay, I will see you in the next video.